Thank you all very much for joining us this afternoon and welcome to the British Blockchain Association's May 4th. Um, we are delighted to welcome um, two very honoured guests. This afternoon we have um, Lord McNichol of West Kilbride who is joining us in his capacity as Vice Chair of the UK All Party Parliamentary Group on Blockchain. Um, and we also are welcoming uh, Megan Kilman, who's the founding officer of Filecoin Foundation, who have recently joined the British Blockchain Association um, in support of our own ecosystem and also uh, in an advisory capacity for the all-party parliamentary group. And we welcome her here this afternoon. Um, some brief updates. Um, we'd like to kind of congratulate and thank all of the participants that joined us for the recent um, International Scientific Conference in Singapore. As you will have seen from our publication of the Journal of the British Blockchain Association um, just this week, that all of the lead papers and the winning paper are included there, as well as a number of other um, peer-reviewed publications. And we thank you all for your contributions um, and congratulations to our winner and featured papers for that particular event. We'd also like to highlight um, that we are actually um, expanding our outreach to our membership community, and we will be accepting some new members and sponsors in 2024 so i'll be in contact with some of you about how you can either um, many of which are, are kind of really advancing a pace and can really benefit anybody who's interested in the blockchain and related spaces so without further ado i'll introduce you and welcome um our honored guest um lord mcnichol of west kilbride who'll be talking today on the future of blockchain and crypto assets in the uk um lord kilbride lord mcnichol please excellent i'm thank you i'm so look i've got i'm a little bit of a I'm speech to sort of go through, but let let me just start by saying I'm. This is really a, this is my first time I'm here. I'm with you, so um, thank you for the invite. I'm not quite sure how to turn myself around, so I, I'm not being rude with my back to the lectern. I'm, I'm to be fair, I'm looking out at the people who are um, who are with us in the in the audience. I'm, but it's something that I'm I will be i will be playing around with and just trying to understand a bit more about. So, d as politicians, I'm all party parliamentary groups, especially like the um, blockchain one or the one on fintech or digital assets are really important about about working with politicians so that they can um, fully understand emerging and, and new technologies and one of the one of the problems with being a politician is that you you're expected to and and are and people look to you to know the answer and especially in new technologies, whether that's crypto assets, whether it's digital currencies, whether it's blockchain, um, whether it's I, all of the many facets of fintech, um, we don't know the answers. Um, but the reason that I've got involved and many of my other colleagues um, have joined this all party parliamentary group across the political spectrum and others is because they want to learn. So if there if there is information that anyone who is listening to this wants to share with myself, um, my contact details are on the parliamentary website, but also there's a list of those members of the um, blockchain. I'm all party parliamentary group. So let me just uh, take through some of the sort of headlines. It's great to be invited here um, to this metaverse uh, today. And again, sorry, to some of the language I will probably get it wrong. So do bear with me and do feel free to, to correct me. I'm, but I'm glad to have the chance to, to talk to you um, today about some of Labour's plans for supporting emerging technologies, fintech, financial technology, and blockchain. So the, the fintech and wider tech sector um, as a whole is big business um, for the UK. It contributes 12% of our economic output, which is over £100 billion to the Treasury um, each year. And within the UK, I'm um, supports I'm um, over one million jobs. If you take the whole of the financial fintech blockchain um, technology sector, and Labour's job and our priority, if if we enter government later this year, is to try and achieve the highest sustained growth in the G7. And this is where it matters to to financial sector and to blockchain because when you grow, when the financial sector grows, 
the country goes. And we're only going to be able to deliver what we want to see um, as a future for the UK if we grow. But for you to grow, you need a government that gives you a stable and consistent policy environment that allows you to do what you do best. So clarity, consistency, leadership, these are some of the bedrock fundamentals um, will be the bedrock fundamentals of future Labour government. Now, fintech is already an incredibly important sector in our economy and its importance is only going to grow. And we are struck, Labour is struck, not only by the capacity of fintech to continue to revolutionise the way we do finance, but also by its capability to promote greater social change and improve the everyday lives of people across I'm at this country. And both fintech and blockchain technology are leading the way in green finance, whether that's in creating a lending market for SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprise businesses, to access the funding they need to be able to reach net zero. Like funding options, green fire SMEs contribute one third of all of the UK's carbon emissions, but many don't have the time. Or, I'm, as another company, in, in aiming to incentivise greener behaviour, behavioural changes in consumers, through things like um, Cobo's personal carbon manager, or EarthChain's use of blockchain to show customers their real-time carbon footprint and gain emissions insight from their spending data, as well as signposting greener companies to shop with. So utilising fintech is going to be essential if we want to reach our net zero commitments. And I've always been impressed with the use of fintech to address concerns around fintech financial inclusion and education um, as well. So by leveraging technology, financial companies are able to tailor services to individual needs, to make services as inclusive as possible and to promote financial literacy amongst the population. To make sure fintech always works in the way that positively impacts society, the government and regulators need to play an active role. So we must avoid complacency and work to secure our position as an international centre of finance and place as a politician. Um, but I do also as a NED and as an advisor to two fintech firms. I advise an AML KYC, anti-money laundering, know your customer business called Astra Enterprise and an ethical lending business which I've been involved with for the last five years. Now, Salad Money, that ethical lending business, lends in the unsecured, near and subprime markets using AI and open banking to make our lending decisions. And this is done in an ethical way. So much so that we're now delivering the government's NILS loan programme. And for those of you who don't know what NILS is, it's the no interest loan scheme. And it's how government are using organisations, businesses like Salad Money and others to lend money to people who have had bad um, or, thin, or have thin credit files and can actually get access to monies in the way that many people do through overdrafts or through loans. So we're helping them rebuild their credit scores. And this was done by the CMA, the Competitions and Markets Authority, um, when they drove open banking um, probably about seven or eight years ago now. So new industries have sprung up around it, but those new industries have allowed fintech businesses um, to, to grow and to develop and to deliver in new areas. And Labour is keen um, to prevent the UK from slipping behind um, and in a fast moving industry like this and with such strong competition globally, that's going to be very easy um, to do. We want fintech businesses to stay and to choose to locate themselves here and not be attracted by other offers like Macron's Choose France campaign. In 2021, the Khalifa review showed that the UK has the capacity and the underlying qualities needed to make us a world leader in fintech and the development of blockchain technology. And it's the job of any government, but hopefully a future Labour government, to make sure that we take full use of those advantages. The UK needs a government not just willing, but 
and is eager to work in partnership with this sector. And at the start of this year, we set out our approach to the sector, one that put forward our belief that embracing innovation. Thank you. Sorry, I'll just do a little bit on on AI, um, and then I'm, I I'll I'll wrap it up then. So artificial intelligence, AI remains a highly complex area and Labour is currently developing a formal strategy for it. But what is clear to us is that AI must be utilised to innovate in the way we work, the way we live, the way we um, access our public services, the way they function, and it can, and it can spearhead the growth we need to unlock public spending. We want to see the UK be a country of choice for AI but we must mitigate against the harms and the potential harms um, of it. It is essential that our desire to see the many transformational effects of AI does not come at the expense um, of all else. So Labour also recognised the case for the state-backed digital pound CBDC as a way of protecting our sovereignty and the integrity of the Bank of England. Now we know it's not a digital currency, it's a fiat currency, but that move to a digital um, pound, which will have to be voted on in Parliament, um, is something that um, we'd like um, to see developed further. And it is vital that we work with the Bank of England to ensure that issues around privacy, inclusion and stability are addressed in the design of the currency and are placed front and centre in their mind. So let me just finish on um, securities tokenizations and DLT. The expanding use of DLT distributed ledger technology and the tokenization of securities in particular also presents an exciting opportunity, one that could be worth nearly $4 trillion globally by the end of this decade. We want the UK to take advantage of that, and it's our ambition that we become a global hub for securities tokenization, something that Crypto UK have welcomed. Our excitement, however, must not be overshadowed um, by the risks associated with speculative currencies. Crypto fraud, stablecoin, the collapse of the FTX scandal, um, has hit savers badly, but it's also hit faith um, within the industry and within the future of it. So Labour is currently access, assessing the ways in which we can prioritise consumer protection and make sure that people are aware of any and all associated risks of speculative assets. And we want to use the regulatory sandboxes that we saw the FCA develop four or five years ago on digital um, uh, digital assets, and um, it's fell away a bit by the wayside. But sandboxes like we see in India and the UAE to test products and the regulatory system. Within them, um, we could, for example, explore the possibility of issuing tokenized gifts via the debit management office. So look, I've I'm, I think I'll wind up there, but just in conclusion, there is huge opportunity um, here and it's how you as a BBA and your members inform, support and help politicians understand the potential benefits that sit around it. Um, and thank you for my first trip into the metaverse for I'm building an avatar which looks a lot younger and better than I do. Dr. Nassim, would you like to say a few words? Would you like us to move on? Okay. Deborah, can you hear me? Oh, I yep, can hear you. Can hear you. Yes, yeah. yes, excellent. Um, Ian, this is a uh, very, very insightful uh, talk. And and today is probably a very historic milestone for the UK, I would say. We have probably become the first country in the world where four members of, of our UK parliament have now appeared in the metaverse to give keynote speeches. We had uh, Natalie and Lord Holmes last year at the BBA summit, then Lord Goddard uh, at BBA forum in April, and now we have had Lord McNichol today. Uh, and and it's probably the first Labour Party politician in British history to deliver an open access keynote speech uh, in the metaverse in his personalized avatar. So this is this is really fantastic. It's a futuristic, you know, this trend trend setting precedent for future generations that events about metaverse, about emerging technologies uh, are, are hosted in the metaverse. So uh, excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Ian. Thank you for your time.
Thank you, Dr. Nakfi.